I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All the Mods 9, and today we set up infinite lava power and do a little bit of adventuring. Hopefully you guys are ready. Now today, it's going to get quite interesting here in All the Mods 9. Today, I have a plan, and that plan involves power and a little bit of create. Believe it or not, we should be able to come up with a really, really nice early game power source but it is going to require a teensy bit of create now that teensy bit of create is actually going to be the hose pulley and believe it or not we're not pulling hoses we're we're actually going to be pulling lava and the hose pulley will allow us to technically infinitely pull lava out of the nether now we're going to need a way to transfer that lava and that's where the ender tank is going to play a role the ender tank so long as we have two are in a cross-dimensional link, and they're linked together based on the color combination that you have on the tank. So technically, we should be able to send lava into this tank here, and then wherever we place this tank in the world, no matter what dimension we're in, we should be able to access the same lava that is in the initial tank. And that is how we're going to do this. So setting it up, we simply need a hose pulley, and this requires a little bit of kelp. Thankfully, we don't need to get too far into the create mod. Normally you would have to get a press setup and uh, that's how you would get started, but not in this. Um, so all we have to do is actually make a copper plate and we can make a copper plate without needing the press. All we need is a hammer. So we can easily make a hammer of any tier. Um, let's go ahead and first let's grab some copper because I just got this all smelted up. Uh, but yeah, all we need is a hammer and we can use a regular iron hammer for this and we'll get a single plate. Now we also need to smelt up some kelp. So getting some of this kelp smelted up is going to be very, very nice. So how is this going to work? Well, we are going to essentially be able to produce infinite lava, which means we should be able to infinitely power our base using the power mod. So there's a lot of cool things that we're going to tap into today, including actually getting uh, some sort of semi-automation done with basic vanilla redstone for the power mod. Yes, I know, I have refined storage and we could easily set up auto crafting, but not just yet, not just yet. I kind of want to hold off on that and just use it for storage for right now, but we will be getting into it very, very soon. Now there is one other item that we're going to need and that is going to be a stripped log where we simply place copper on it. And this is going to give us a copper casing. This thing right here is one of the main components of this hose pulley. And this is in a lot of mod packs. So the hose pulley has been since creates it, it, creation, I guess you could say the hose pulley has been sort of a fundamental part of mod packs. Now there are other pumps, I believe. Um, there are different pumps in here that you could also use to infinitely gather lava. Well, maybe not infinitely, but definitely gather lava for an extended period of time. And that is the range pumps mod. And then there's also RF tools, which can technically fill and do the same thing. However, with create, this pulls infinitely after it sees that there is a certain amount of liquid underneath. And it can do that with several different types of fluids, so long as it's allowed in the config. Now, so long as any, nothing has changed, so long as there hasn't been any change in the configs, I still believe that it is 10,000 blocks worth of a fluid. So, so long as there's 10,000 blocks, it's supposed to consider it an infinite source, which in my opinion is kind of meta changing for mod packs. So long as the hose pulley has that setting enabled, which I do believe it is enabled in this. So now we have a hose pulley. How do we activate the hose pulley? Well, this is where it's quite simple. I just need myself a hand crank. This is our first time making andesite alloy, which is uh, not too difficult to make. And I'm surprised I don't have a bunch of andesite laying around. But here we go, after all of that, uh, believe it or not, our base did not apparently pull any andesite. That's unfortunate, because yeah, that, that would be re really useful for getting into crate. But here we go, a hand crank. This is really all you need for the hose pulley. Um, that, and you're gonna need uh, the ability to chunk load said dimension. Now we're also gonna need some sort of pipe to be able to pull from the hose pulley. And for this, I can just simply use the pipes mod. Um, and you know what? I'm actually going to use the universal pipe just because I like how it looks over the basic pipes. Isn't that funny that the looks of a mod can completely determine if I'm going to use it or not? 
let's go ahead while we have these here, let's go ahead and set these to a specific channel. So I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to die all of these individual pieces here. So now these two are linked to orange, 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 orange. And uh, these now uh, will have the ability to store uh, on the same channel. So we should be able to leave one in this world and have access to the other. So let's go ahead and head into the nether and access this pump. So now that we're in the nether, all we have to do is have access to lava. And now directly underneath is a nice lava pool. And I was looking and I was like, oh yeah, this actually drops perfectly down. So having this here is perfect. Now this slot right here that has the dark face, this is actually where we're gonna receive the lava. And then on the other side is the actual p place for the crank. Um, now we do need direct access to lava down here. So that is perfect. And then all we have to do is simply get our hose all the way down there. Now I like to break the block underneath just so I can see. And so notice it wasn't going down. So I'm holding down shift to reverse the direction. And then that is going to send this all the way down. Now, once it stops moving, then we know we've reached the bottom here. And uh, that is where we want to stop uh, because it won't continue anymore. <laughs> the whole thing should technically stop. Now it has stopped and notice my hunger is very low because doing this actually consumes your hunger. But last episode, we changed toward the location of our mob farm and now we get amethyst crab meat. And this stuff is actually really good. I need to make that automatic feeding upgrade for the backpack. This is gonna be really nice. It even gives you regeneration, which is just ridiculous. Now, I have this set up and what we're going to need to do is place our pipe. So I'm gonna place the pipe right here. And there is a little bit of a lip on this. And so you can't actually see this, but I'm gonna go ahead and access my tool belt, go to my pipe wrench. And if I shift right click, Technically, this is now available for upgrades, but you notice you can't really tell because that lip is there, uh, but you can access this and I am actually going to go under the fluids tab and I'm going to put my upgrade in. And so now, as soon as we place down this inner tank, which by the way, needs to be placed sort of in this direction, as you see here, um, this should technically start filling up and notice it says lava 32,000 out of 32,000. That is a full tank right there. And um, yeah, it says right here, apparently there's a pump. I don't know if this has a pump limit that we're gonna have to upgrade, but for right now it says 250 millibuckets on the pump. But I believe this right here will transfer with the upgrade. Looks like 500 millibuckets a tick, which is actually really good, really good. That'll get us by for quite a while. Now, one thing, don't forget to chunk load by going into your FTP chunks and claiming the area and then holding down shift to chunk load the area. If you're playing single player, that is, because some servers may limit this functionality. So now at this point, we have unlimited lava and we can use that for several applications. And we're gonna use it for a ton of things, including maybe getting power from Create directly and many other options into the future. It's gonna be quite nice, but let's go ahead and switch gears real quick and dive a little bit into the power mod so that way we can implement this lava. So when starting with the power mod, we need a few things. Um, so we're gonna need access to some power. Uh, so uh, some initial power is definitely needed for this. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and set a hopper here, and then I'm gonna place down an energizing orb. This energizing orb is how you craft the materials that you're gonna need for this mod. Um, later on, we are definitely going to have easy automation for this, but for now, I'm gonna show you a simple way to automate it before you have access to anything. And that is gonna involve having two hoppers, for example, and this is just for the, the hardened version of the material that we're going to be making. So if we dive in here, we can in, into the power mod, we can see there is energized steel. This requires one gold and one iron, and it is very specific. If you put two iron in here, it will not continue to craft, it will stop. So we need to define and tell these hoppers, hey, stop whenever it does receive an item in here. Um, and so that's gonna require a comparator on the front. And then we're gonna work with this signal, but we still don't have a way of powering this just yet. So this is where we're gonna take some basic cables and I'm just going to have some cables hooked up back here. And then just one generator in the back should be more than enough to keep this all running. And then we're gonna need rods. I went ahead and went with basic rods, even though you could go with starter. And these rods are, are going to automatically connect to the energizing orb. If I open my belt and access the wrench, we should be able to see uh, as soon as we're in link mode, 
that it is connected. And so we see right here that it's ready to go. So with all of this, how do we get this to work? Well, first we need to tell it to do a little bit of redstone and magic. Well, then redstone magic looks a little bit like this. So we have a simple comparator that is running out of here. Uh, and then we have a repeater that is going to lock this hopper. Now, another thing that we could technically get that will help us out is going to be a lever because putting the ingredients in, we want our hoppers to be locked. So to do that, we need to give it a redstone signal. So these hoppers are locked. So let's go ahead and put our materials in. And then as soon as we're ready to craft it, we unlock and notice it's going to send exactly the right amount of materials. It's going to then receive the power and craft and that is going to give us energizing steel. And this is just one of many different redstone solutions to this problem, but it's probably one of the simplest. This is incredibly easy to set up early game if you don't already have a way of auto crafting, which I know we do have refined storage and we can definitely set it up with that, but I would prefer later on to set this up with apply energistics. Now that we have all of that hardened material, we can now craft the thing that is going to give us power. And that is going to be the magmator. This just needs lava and in return is going to give us 400 FE per tick. Yes, it is a little bit of micro crafting to get these together, but it is going to be very worth it. 400 for just one is quite a bit of power. But this isn't the only thing I'm going to craft. No, 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 no. There's still one more thing, and that is personal wireless charging. That's right. We can actually set up wireless charging already. Now this setup is going to require a different type of component, and it's probably going to be best if I just craft this one by hand for now. And as you see right here, this should produce something special, an ender core. And we're going to need ender cores in order to make the things that are going to allow us to have access to wireless things. Pretty darn cool. Now we are going to need an energy cell and an ender cell. And these two things are going to work in combination to allow us to use ender gates. Ender gates will allow us to have wireless power. So we'll store everything in a ender cell and then we'll use ender gates to power other machines um, wirelessly, <laughs> which is pretty cool. And then we're going to use a player transmitter in order to send power to us. Now we are going to need a special card and it's going to be a binding card. We can actually make this cross dimensional as well by simply right clicking an Enderman with it. So we'll find an Enderman and we'll have cross dimensional charging. Now, in order for us to be able to craft the player transmitter, we're going to need this aerial pearl. Uh, and this is going to require us to click a zombie or basically capture a zombie. So I need to go out on a hunt looking for a zombie. And these guys weren't too bad to find and simply right click. <laughs> and so now this turns into a player player aerial pearl. Now this binding card to be able to upgrade it, we need to click it and activate it, but we can actually upgrade it even further. We can either look for an Enderman or we can potentially get an Endermite to spawn in. Uh, and I'm pretty sure Endermites can spawn even if we have a torch. It's just going to require a lot of ender pearl activations, potentially. Or I could just, yeah, I probably have a, I'll probably have better luck if I just find an enderman. Oh, nope, there's one. Okay, so we're supposed to be able to click that. And now this is cross dimensional. So that's just one easy way of doing this. And I love it. So with all of this ready to go, we now have access outside of just making the magmator, we now have everything needed in order to gain access to wireless power. Now with all of that crafting, the power section here is kind of crazy in the rewards that it's going to give me. There's a ton of rewards here and we could end up with duplicates of things we already have, which I would really like. If we can get more furnators out of this, oh, it'd be golden. Honestly, not anything super exciting <laughs> that we got as a reward, unfortunately. Uh, as everything we've already really crafted up. So let's put all of this stuff together and get ourselves wireless power. Now to set this up, it shouldn't be too difficult. We'll just have a universal pipe connected to that hardened magmator. And then back here, we just need to get a tank hooked up to that. Now we access our wrench and we're just going to get lava going in here. And already it is set up. Now I'm going to speed this up a little bit just for future use. And this is already producing 400 RF per tick on just one. I plan on making more and to do that, I'll just add more pipes here. Um, so uh, is this on the fluid? I guess it doesn't really matter. This works for all. I didn't even realize that. Um, so 
What do we do to actually get this power transferred over? Well, we can go ahead and use a ender cell, and then we need to put an energy cell inside the ender cell. Not to be super confused, but an ender cell is how we gain access to the wireless power. And then when you make an energy cell, you need to shift right click to send it into the actual uh, ender cell. <laughs> it can be kind of confusing. Uh, but now that we have that, we will have wireless power via these things. So if we were to attach this to any machine, this is acting as this, uh, this block right here. So this little node basically can send 5,000 RF per tick with this current tier, and it can send it to a machine, which we're definitely gonna be using. Now, this isn't the only thing we can set up. We can also tap into the player transmitter, and I'm gonna place that on top of the ender cell. This is also gaining access to power, and all we need to do is place that new dimensional power card in here, and this is going to start charging up things in my inventory. Yes, so all of that power currently is being used to charge our jetpack. Now, another cool thing is the ender gates themselves, these little things, they can also be used to send power back into the network. So not only can they send power out, but they can also transfer it in. So to just upgrade this directly, it is going to be quite simple. We'll go ahead and extend the cables here. And then I have four more of the magmators and I'm going to place those in. Those will fill with lava. Remember each producing 400 each. And then I'm just going to use energy cables to transfer the power in. And I think that looks pretty clean and is expandable. So we could expand this in multiple different ways. But for right now, this seems to be working pretty good. Um, now, I'm wondering, this is now extending this buffer. And I think the player transmitter's buffer has to fill up before this will actually start to fill up. Uh, but these should be doing a pretty good job as each one of them are producing, like we're right now producing over a thousand RF per tick. Actually, we're producing exactly 2000 RF per tick. So now we've effectively solved the world's energy crisis. <laughs> if only that was the truth. But in our world, we've definitely produced now infinite power. Now let's go ahead and put this to use. So we have ourselves a emerald furnace here. This is just one of the iron furnaces and I'm going to place it up against the wall here basically creating an auto smelter. And then I'm gonna have a barrel on the bottom and top, and that way we can configure this. Uh, and we want to set the auto input to on, or uh, auto input and output to on. We'll go ahead and clear this out by holding down shift and clicking the middle. And then this will be the input and the bottom will be the output. Now, this is where the upgrades and augments come into play. I'm gonna go ahead and use a speed, but I also wanna convert this into a factory. And doing so means this is going to use power now. And it also gets more slots. So. I wanna feed it power with one of our ender gates. And by simply placing this on here, we now have four slots that can smelt things. Now, for example, I have a bunch of copper dust. We can go ahead and place this in and look how quickly this is going to smelt and now produce our resources. This is really nice, but there are other mods in here that I wanna get into that's gonna do something very similar to this. However, this is great early on before we get into mechanism. So now we have ore processing, which kind of have ore processing. Uh, and we also now have wireless power, which means my jetpack is going to have infinite fuel. And I can, I can trust now to use the hover mode more effectively. But there's also something else. If we're going to do more exploring, well, I think there's one other thing that I need. And that's a feeding upgrade. And this bad boy is powerful. So I have put it off just a little bit. Uh, before making it, but I will say this can be almost more powerful than just having armor on. Uh, and the reason is, is because you need food to regenerate your health. And a lot of times that's the one thing that hinders you in combat is not eating correctly or fast enough. But with this, we're going to be able to eat so quickly and so much that we won't really have that problem anymore. And the cool thing is, is the advanced version of this actually knows when to consume the food. Um, so we can set this to allow and make sure it only eats the crab meat. And now anytime we take damage, any type of damage, um, where we need hearts regenerated, it's going to automatically consume food if we have the hunger uh, available, like the hunger haunches available. Um, otherwise, what it's going to do is it's going to wait until um, our hunger reaches a certain level before consuming, basically optimizing our food. 
It's incredibly, incredibly powerful. Now, remember our quarry that we set up inside of the mining dimension? Yeah, I think it's now time to maybe pack everything up and take this back to the overworld and then also relocate our telepad, which I think is going to put us in a different location. Now, based on my map, after taking all of my, uh, my systems and moving them over into a new area on the telepad, uh, I'm thinking about traveling off in this direction and doing a bit more exploring, hopefully to uncover maybe more structures where there could potentially be even more loot to help us get started in several new mods. Now, this is just really nice being able to just simply fly around and just locate all kinds of different stuff. Um, and yeah, it is. it does feel kind of crazy that just a gold jetpack does this. Like, this is insanely fast traveling around way faster than a creative flight, and it's only gold. Like, I can only imagine how much faster these, like, max tier versions go. You'll be flying so fast that you won't even be able to load the chunks. Also, what is this thing? <laughs> Speaking of exploring, uh, is this a villager outpost? Like a special one? Ah, uh, it's definitely a villager outpost. Is there good loot in here? And I hope I'm not interrupting a meeting or anything like that. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to be interrupting a meeting. <laughs> this actually is a pretty decent way of getting uh, the Vindicators. Ooh, that has sharpness on it. Mage Hunter. Interesting. Ah, we just ended up eating. See how powerful that is? Oh, this might be an Iron Spells and Spellbook structure. Ooh. This could also be kind of scary because I might know what lies beneath. But I do want to grab this stuff. This right here is an inscription table from the mod, and this is a great way to get into this mod, is by simply looting some of these structures. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Look at this. Right here. There's some barrels with goodies in it. Oh, we definitely need to grab all of this stuff. Yes, this is going to be way nice. Not, not exactly wheat, though. Oh, hello. Let's try to avoid. This is the Arch of Ochre. Uh-oh. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait, he's invisible. All right. Hey, quit with that. <laughs> this is actually kind of fun. These guys are pretty cool. All right, that hurts. That hurts. Hitting me with the fireworks. I hate the fireworks. All right, and this evoker. Wow, he just hit me with a wind spell. Drop some goodies. Oh, that was super cool. And this is just one of many, I think, different like spell areas. Oh, we ended up getting like a spell rune. I wonder if this was like the main boss or if this was just like a mini boss from this tower. Let's see. Okay, we got a, an interesting rune. This is all from the Iron Spells and Spell Books, by the way. Um, and this mod allows you to essentially make a, uh, a, a sort of a spell book that has different spells in it and allows you to sort of build your sort of spell kit the way you want to, which I think is pretty cool. Look at the goat horns. Oh my. <laughs> did that just make what I thought it did? <laughs> that was the, that was the like THX or whatever sound, like the movie theater sound. Oh, this is hilarious. By the way, if you, uh, a little tip with the backpacks, I have a backpack on, but I made an extra backpack. And in your inventory, whatever key you have assigned to open your backpack, for in my, in my case, it's B, you can actually hover over your backpack and hit B. And that allows you to open up the one that's maybe in your inventory that you want to use for like random storage. Now we didn't see what was on this side. Oh, it's like their uh, their their cult meeting spot. <laughs> what else is around here? A couple of these guys. Interesting. I hear more. So there's got to be more to this, right? There's a trident. Let's see a normal barrel. I want to try and grab as much loot as possible. I hear more. Is there an underneath to this? Oh, there is an underneath to this. Oh, interesting. And candles. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> what is this going to do? What's down here? Oh, there is a spawner. Ooh, we want to try and get rid of those. But that's still pretty cool. Is there more to this? There's a whole block of emerald right here. I... It does look like this is a walkway. 
but it doesn't lead anywhere, so I have no idea what is up here. This is under the stairs. Tricky, tricky. Look at that. It's a Vex spawner. What a weird kind of spawner to have. I definitely want to get into this mod more in the future, as I think it's going to provide some really nice utility. Now, I thought this structure was kind of interesting. I seen this in the wall and I was like, what is this? Oh yeah, remember that building that we tried to take a look at early on in the series? That had creepers flowing in them. I think this is it. Yeah, this is definitely the building. I don't really see a lot of loot in here though. And maybe that's just how it is, right? Is you go down here thinking there's a lot of loot or maybe I have to go down here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Down here is where the loot's at. So yes, it's just full of creepers and spiders and mobs and the whole shabang, right? Because these creepers will explode. I'm just actually hoping they will. There we go. They will explode and well, there actually are loot chests, but I'm almost positive they're probably going to be trapped. Um, and do I have torches available? I should have some torches in. Uh, maybe not. Please no, no trap. Oh, <gasps> oh wow. Okay, that's a lot of useful loot, actually. I will take all of it. Uh, does that mean they're all not trapped? Oh, that is so good. Okay, this is all valuable loot to me. I wonder why the some of the creepers are, like, not attracted to me. Like, they're just kind of, like, chill over there. Not bothering me at all. Okay, so much good loot. Okay, I'm just trying to get this all placed in as quick as possible. I think this one got blown up, unfortunately, but hey, <laughs> I can't complain. That was actually a pretty nice loot, and I'm, I'm sure you couldn't see a thing because of how dark it was. Now, sometimes in these little temples here from Evilcraft, there will be chests that will also have some really good loot, but I have noticed that in these chests, there are a chance for you to find artifacts in these loot pools, so definitely worth discovering and checking out. Look what I just found. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be so fun. So I have experienced this thing once, but I have never got to like really dive into it and see what all this is about. Now, I definitely want to activate night vision. So I'm going to put my goggles on and that goes into my head slot. There we go. So now we can see everything as we enter in a temple. And this thing is really cool. Literally like the Temple of Doom. All right. Does this have anything loot? Nope, no loot there. Now, I don't expect the loot to be anything amazing, but it's just about the experience, right? Like, I don't know, being shot with trap arrows. Ooh, this is a chest though. Oh, the loot is actually really good. Okay, definitely wanna grab as many loot capacitors from Ender.io as possible. Definitely worth it. I am slowly but surely running out of inventory space, but there we go, there's all of that. Huh. What is, what's, what is there? Is there more? I'm afraid I'm going to get like shot with something really, really bad. Or something really, really bad is going to happen. But I, I kind of want the traps to happen. There's an observer up there. He's watching me. All right. We have some space down here. Apparently it goes even deeper. And, oh no. Is this a parkour challenge? Uh, It does appear to be with like punji sticks. I think I... I mean, with the jetpack. Oh, hey, whoa. <laughs> when you walk through here, it shoots you off. That's hilarious. I need to turn my uh, my engines off of my jetpack. So let's turn them off so we can do the parkour normally. Oh my gosh, I am awful at this. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm so bad. I feel like it's because of the jetpack. All right. And how do I, how do I get over there? Or there? Do I not do it at all? Oh my gosh. Actually, I may, this may not be parkour. It may just be, hey, skip the pressure plates challenge. <laughs> there we go. I parkoured my way all the way through this. Um, these guys, what are you? Uh oh, I hear silverfish. This cannot be good. Um, hopefully there's no hitting pressure plates. Okay. There's vines. This is definitely not parkour, because there'd be no way I would be able to get over here. I guess we can break through this? Yeah, that's how we get up, right? All right, what's next? <laughs> There's supposed to be some integration with Create, I believe, in this. 
But it's like it I get shot right there. It, it just keeps going. It keeps going. Ooh. Pain. Like I said, the loot rewards are not the greatest. Aside from these. <laughs> these are actually pretty sacked. Um, anything else? There's some bamboo. And I think that's it. For the little dungeon area down here. Interesting. But yeah, these are kind of fun. Depending on the traps. I think there can be different types of traps. And different variations of these. So, it definitely depends on which one you get. And this one wasn't too bad. Yeah, I think the best part about it is all of these droppers and dispensers that I don't have to craft. Yeah, and let's do this back. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, we made it. And we could grab all of these. These are from supplementaries. Eh, definitely want the dispensers more. Oh my gosh, and on that bottom floor, there's actually another loot chest. <laughs> it was hidden back here. I thought there might be one underneath here. Oh, and we got bunny slippers. Oh, yes, that's the one I want. I don't want the cat one that scares creepers. That's why the creepers didn't care about me earlier. It's because I forgot I had the cat creepers uh, slippers on. But I definitely want bunny hoppers, as these prevent fall damage, and that is probably one of the best things I could have right now. Now at this point, now that I'm back home, we are looking pretty dripped out. Look at my bunny slippers. Oh man, <laughs> they're so good. I got some diamond gloves on, uh, just ready for a boxing match. And we got unlimited power set up, and that's big. That's a big step in our progression here. And we are heading towards the Aldemod Star. So with that in mind, we definitely need to tap into automation very soon. So that's something we're gonna be diving into here in the next few episodes. But I think so far, so this base is turning out pretty good. And I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have enjoyed, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and ring that beautiful little notification bell so you'll be notified when I publish a new video. Also, give this video a huge thumbs up. I know it's like asking a lot, but what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. What's your thoughts on this base so far? Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you want some more of it? Just let me know down in the comments. I appreciate you guys. And it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to CoolBot 100s. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. I thank you all so, so very much. Hope to see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.